Hi, friends. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode of Lashes Love Tech. I'm your host, hip hop engineer, K Malcolm. Today, we have the Amblers. There's a boy here today. Eddie and Brianna Ambler are both, yes, I said it, they are both in the database product management organization here at Oracle. Father and daughter, I know, super amazing. Eddie is a senior principal product manager of database cloud and Exadata. Now, I met Eddie many, many years ago when he was a big-time master principal sales consultant at Oracle. He left us for a little bit and was deputy CTO at Bias, an Oracle partner, and now he's back. Eddie is also a fellow electrical engineering major from FAMU. Eddie, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Kay. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. Excellent. Eddie, you've brought a special guest. Brianna is a software engineer intern on my team. Brianna is Eddie's second daughter. She is in her third year at the Georgia Institute of Technology, love your shirt, Brianna, majoring in computer science. Currently in Brianna's internship, Brianna is working on live labs and doing development work. Now, most thought that she was a full-time employee when she started with us. She continues to inspire and amaze us. The two of you have an amazing story. In many of these shows, we talk about how, you know, we ask this question, how do you encourage young women to pursue technical careers? Now, today, what I want to do is I want to explore this from both of your perspectives. Brianna, I want to start with you. Okay. Tell me about your journey to tech and how was your dad impactful in that? Okay. So starting with my journey. And when I look back at that, I realized that I spent like a lot of time on my school presentations, on like designing websites and things like that. And so I had decided that I was going to go to school for graphic design. And after a while playing with that, I was like, okay, I want to do more. Like, you know, how can I extend what I'm already doing. And I realized that I'll probably need to know how to develop. And so I went to school and I was like, hey, let me register for AP computer science. And they're like, cool, we'll put you in the class. They got me in there. And then a couple of weeks later, they told me, hey, sorry, we're going to have to drop you. The class is canceled. And I was like, yeah, I was like, well, what do you mean? Like the class is canceled. And I was the only person in my school in that class. Oh. And so that's when I realized like, our school really wasn't equipped to prepare students for STEM careers. Mm. So it became, I noticed that it was like a hassle to try to find resources and things for me to be a competitive student for someone trying to go to a school for computer science. But because of my dad, you know, I had someone who had already done that journey and had led by example, but it was unfortunate that like other people didn't have that opportunity if they don't have someone so close by at home to show them that these things and these careers are in reach. And so I definitely accredit my dad for inspiring me on a daily basis because I've seen him go to work. I've seen him work every day of my life and, you know, but having someone who had already done what I'm doing now has just allowed me to realize that nothing is out of reach. And as a black woman in tech, a lot of times they try to project that, like, that's not an option, that these things aren't possible and that, you know, we don't really fit the, what they're looking for. And that's another thing, like my dad, he's a very social person. I'd say that he's he like is. outgoing and everything. And, you know, he doesn't, he also doesn't fit the typical stereotype that people put on like developers and just people in the tech industry and what you usually see. So I feel like seeing my dad do these things and balance his personality and his career and everything has also allowed me to maintain my personality and maintain who I am as I navigate these new spaces where people try to mold me into certain things. So I'd say all of that has led me to where I am now. It's gotten me into Georgia Tech and ultimately gotten me here at Oracle doing software engineering, like without 
my dad. And that's like literally how I met you and how like this has all just happened. So I'd say that my dad has a huge role in where I am now in my journey into tech. Eddie? Father. Wow, that's that's um like are you okay? Really, it's great to sit back and hear it. <laughs> you know, I can eye. tell you. I heard a few things that as parents, um, I just want to share is as a father early on, I found Brianna's traits that she was great at. I remember her being um, in middle school and as she talked about her presentations and I would tell her, honey, your presentation skills are amazing. This is the thing that's going to differentiate you when you get into the workforce. And she would kind of say, oh, dad, you're you're, you're making this up. This is not special. And, um, you know, I always had a vision of her success, right? So when I look at uh, my kids and I look at the young ladies in my life and in my surrounding, I see them all as potential VPs and CEOs, right? I think that all of the ladies have that uh, ability inside of them to succeed. But what they need from us as parents is our belief to set the vision for them, to set that seed and that path, to let them know that it's okay to take on things that are hard. As Brianna will tell you, one of the things I always say to the kids is, it's only hard until you know how, and then it's easy. That is the thing that you know I continue to instill in them. And I think it's one of the driving uh, motivations that you can bring to your kids is right your belief in them, giving them that vision of the opportunity that's in front of them and help them to build their network, right? You know, they, they, their kids will feed significantly off of your energy and your beliefs. So if you believe they will as well. I love how that, that, um, that quote and lashes love tech peeps. I told you that this is going to be one take out your notebook because he's going to drop some nuggets. <laughs> it's really hard until it's easy gave Brianna the courage to continue to press on because, I mean, she shared in her story that when she was dropped from the computer science AP class, she kept pressing on. So much of who you are is what we're seeing in Brianna today. Well, okay. She's actually, I will always tell her she's a better version of me. I love it. I love it. Brianna. When you joined database product management last year, you made mm -hmm. quite an impact, so much of an impact, we invited you back. And it wasn't just me. My boss, VP of database, Jenny Sy Smith, said, we've got to have her back. Now, I want you to think about how you felt when you were here initially. Did you ever feel like you didn't belong or you couldn't do you couldn't do the job or even at school. Do you have those feelings of, you know, maybe I'm not really built to be here and tell our listeners how you overcame those feelings. Absolutely. Do I have those feelings? I, my dad will tell you, I struggled with that. That was like my first big college struggle that I had going to a school like Georgia Tech, where you have students who have already decided from a child that this is what they were going to be doing. You had people who were coding from when they were eight years old, and then you're going in there, you're 18, and you're like, oh, I don't even know what this like hello world statement means. Like, like, what are we talking about? You know, it's like you're starting from scratch and you have people who are quote unquote so far ahead of you, and it gets really intimidating. And then personally, coming from being like valedictorian, and not that you have an ego or anything, but you have this confidence that you've built over time. And then you get to school and it's like, everyone's like that. So that one thing that really sets you apart from everyone else is no longer there. Everyone else has that. And so it was like, okay, well now I'm having like an identity crisis. I'm like, well, who am I without school? Like what, like how good am I really, you know? And I think the main thing that has allowed me to overcome those feelings was kind of just decide, not trying to avoid the feelings, like identifying them, realizing what they are, but then also realizing whether or not it was reality or just the feeling, like how you talked about earlier. Um, I feel like I had that feeling, but my reality was that I was showing up and I was trying my best. 
And I was, there was a lot of things that I was doing right. And I would get stuck and hung up on all the things that I weren't, I didn't feel like I was doing, or, you know, you get stuck on that progress rail. You're just like, oh, like, how can I be doing better? How can I be doing better? But you kind of like need to take a step back and you need to realize that what you're doing right. Because at the end of the day, you are sitting in the same room as everyone else that you're trying to put on a pedestal. Fear is something that holds us all back from reaching our full potential. You know, I would share with her my anxiety. I would share with her my failures so that she would not be afraid to fail. Wait, because wait. So failure, you shared your failures with absolutely. her, not your successes? Absolutely. You know, because out of my failure, she could understand resilience, right? It's, it's, I wanted her to not be afraid to try, yes. right? To not be able to, to, to be held back. So when you when you're not afraid of fear, that you understand that failure is just an opportunity to try again, then you're not afraid to try. Right. The only thing that you can be guaranteed of out of fear is that if you don't do it, you've already failed. Right. And that's why I share my failures, because I might come into the room and I'm not the best today, but my ego, as Brianna said, would say, but I will be tomorrow. And by sharing my failures and my my openness to compete that gives hopefully her the confidence to really go after her goals. It's so authentic. It's so vulnerable for you to share something like that with your child, right? We always think, oh, we want to show our best selves to our child, but doing that had so much of an impact on her. I love it. Eddie, I want to talk about your day-to-day Tell us what product do you support as a product manager and how is it disrupting the industry? Why is it so important? Well, um, I'm a, a cloud database services product manager. So I am representing the suite of Oracle databases. My background is in databases. I have researched all kinds of databases across the industry, whether they're on-premise and in the cloud. And as you know, Kay, Data is everywhere, but everywhere. information is king. So we're helping our companies to be able to put their arms around these huge data sets that are growing every day, that are being included in more and more of the devices that touch our lives, right? So that corporations can be able to deliver better services, faster services. Um, so as a product manager, I keep a pulse on what it is that the people need you know, how the innovations that we're bringing to market can help to make their lives better, to improve manufacturing processes, to improve the quality of life of maybe people who might be disabled. You see um, projects that people are working on in the field that are in research, right? Those might not be doing anything today, but uh, as a great example, Brianna's working on a robotics project where they're studying the inner things in motion and hopefully one day out of those research projects, we will be able to help people to walk again. Those are the kinds of things that we do is really just push innovation uh, forward to help the quality of people's lives. I love it. I love it. Outstanding. Brianna, and I mean, this must be so special to wake up every day and go to work with your daughter. But Brianna, tell me about your day-to-day -day specifically I want to know about the project Live Labs that you're working on. Why do you like working on it so much that you agreed to come back a second year? For one, it's who created it. I feel like, okay, you know, <laughs> like you've done such a great job. Like your story behind the like creation of Live Labs is inspiring. And I think as an intern, I got so much responsibility. I was able to basically lead my own project. And that was far more than I ever thought I was capable of doing or that I thought I would be allowed to do. And I think a lot of that is accredited to the fact, to the type of you know manager that you work to me. And also with the platform being new, it allowed for a lot of room for improvement. And I was able to actually contribute as it was being developed. So that was an opportunity that I felt like was unique to not just Oracle, but to your team in particular. So I think that was like a major driving factor into why I came back. So much so that Brianna's contributions have led to Live Labs having almost 3 million views in, has it been two years? Yeah, two and a half years. Just outstanding, outstanding work.
So Brianna, tell us quickly, if someone wants to start building a solution and try out Live Labs, how do they get started? Yeah, if you want to try out Live Labs, I would say go to our website, developer.oracle.com slash Live Labs, and you can make a free account and you will see all of our catalog of workshops that we have to offer. And you can have Live Labs provision you a workspace. You can use your own workspace. There's plenty of options out there for you to get started. I would say start there. Check it out. Perfect. Eddie, one more nugget. Who <laughs> charges for this one? We want a free one. <laughs> well, actually, the, the, uh, the, the last nugget that I will give is just continue to encourage not just your kids, right? As adults, let's reach out to the community at large. Um, one of our goals this year is to get out to the universities and give them that vision, that exposure of what they can do. Lots of our kids are limited by their vision. They, they're only limited by the things that they think they can achieve. So let's get out there and show them all that we can be. You like to be social in front of people. IT can be for you. You like to be behind the scenes. You don't really want to be in front of people. IT can be for you. You want to work in, in different industries. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. All of those things are available for you. And that's the message we got to get out there. And it brings us back to that quote that I gave you earlier. You know, don't be afraid to take on a challenge, right? Things are only hard until you know how, and then they're easy. Friends, what did I tell you? The Amblers our family goals. Want more? Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that you can be alerted for new episodes. Remember, be yourself. Everyone else is taken. Be your own advocate. Maintain an authentic brand that is you and you alone. Love hard, dance with abandon, laugh loudly and often. This is Hip Hop Engineer signing off. I'll see you guys next time. Eddie, Brianna, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having Thank us. For Thank you. Us. Take care. Thank Take you. care. Brianna, you got to get back to work. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had a few more minutes, girl. Get to it. <laughs>